It's important to practice. Today, we will practice finding the method of moments estimators for a few different distributions. And in addition, we'll go to the computer and compute those estimators on some example data sets. Let's keep going with method of moments estimators. We'll look at a few more situations. The next one is when we have, I should say these are independent, an independent random sample from the geometric distribution. So remember, um, for the geometric distribution, this means um, each random variable y is um, number of the trial on which the first success occurs um, in independent Bernoulli trials Bernoulli trials with um, probability of success given by little p Okay, so if we have a random sample of geometric random variables, it's like we ran independent Bernoulli trials until we got the first success, and that is y1. And then um, we again ran independent Bernoulli trials until the first success, and that's y2, and so on up to yn. So now we want to take all these y's, and we want to estimate p, because we don't know the value of p. So, let's find the method of moments estimator of p. Alright, so to find the method of moments estimator, our first thing is to take the first sample moment. So this thing, remember, is x bar, this, the mean of the sample values or it's, let's use y bar, okay, because I'm using y's. And we're going to set this equal to the first population moment, which is going to be a function of this parameter p. Okay. Uh, we have to think back or look at a table or something uh, to remember that uh, the expected value uh, for the geometric p distribution is 1 over p. Okay, so if p is 1 half, then we expect, in the sense of expected value, the first success to occur on the second trial. If p is uh, 1 fifth, we would expect the first success to come on the fifth trial in the sense of expected value. So this is 1 over p. Okay. This gives the method of moments estimator um, as the solution to the equation y bar equals 1 over p. Okay, because I've set my y bar equal to 1 over p. And so uh, solving that for p, we'll call it p bar, is 1 over y bar. 1 over y bar. So that's my method of moments estimator. Good. So I'm supposed to observe all these values of y and then compute the mean and take 1 over the mean. And that's my estimator of p according to method of moments. Now, um, Question two here says, uh, consider a different estimator, which is this n minus 1 over the sum of the yi's minus 1. And uh, we want to compare this method of moments estimator to this other estimator. Well, what could possibly be wrong with our method of moments estimator? Um, well, we know that the method of moments procedure or recipe for estimators doesn't always give us like the best estimator. It might, but it's not guaranteed to give us the best estimator. So 
we might we might ask ourselves is um, p bar um, the MVUE? That would be a good question to ask. Um, to check, we would have to ask, is it based on a sufficient statistic? Um, and secondly, is it unbiased? Is it unbiased? Okay. Um, the first question uh, we can answer. Let's let's do that first before we start getting into this other estimator. So let's ask: Is the method of moments estimator um, based on a sufficient statistic? So let's find uh, a sufficient statistic for for p. Okay. Because knowing whether our estimator is based on a sufficient statistic will kind of tell us uh, whether we should keep looking for some better estimator out there. If our estimator is based on a sufficient statistic, then that's kind of a good sign. Um, okay, so to get the sufficient statistic for P, I need to write down the joint probability mass function of Y1 through Yn. Since these are discrete, they have a joint probability mass function. So joint, this is y1 through yn, y1 through yn, depends on p. Joint probability mass function. Oh, now we have to remember the geometric probability mass function. It's this one. Okay, so... Um, this comes from the fact that there was uh, one success preceded by yi minus one failures. Okay, because remember these yi's represent um, the number of the trial on which the first success occurred. Okay, so here is my joint probability mass function. Let's simplify it a little bit to see if we can figure out what a sufficient statistic is. Um, I can write it like this. P to the power n. Okay. And um, here I can see that the sum of the yi's is a sufficient statistic. Why can I see that? Um, here I've got a function of the sum of the yi's and p. And I can, if I want to do the factorization theorem a little more clearly, I could include here um, some indicator functions telling me the support. So this is like each yi has to be um, a positive whole number. So here I've got... Um, product of those indicator functions which are asking is are my yi's positive whole numbers like they have to be okay then I can call this my h function of not x's but y1 through yn okay so by the factorization theorem sum of the yi's is a sufficient statistic for the parameter p. So if I want to come up with a good estimator, I should begin with something that involves the sum of the yi's. Does our method of moments estimator involve the sum of the yi's? Remember, our method of moments estimator was uh, 1 over y bar n. Yeah, that's, um, that's like 1 over sum of the yi's divided by n. So I could write that as n over the sum of the yi's. Okay, so actually the method of moments estimator um, is a function of a sufficient statistic. So, um, so maybe I can put a little checkbox. Um, yes, it's based on a sufficient statistic. Um, is it unbiased? So if we're going to continue asking, 
is the method of moments estimator, um, the MVUE, the minimum variance unbiased estimator. We want to first check whether it's based on a sufficient statistic. It is, but secondly, we would have to check whether it's unbiased. We find actually that it's not unbiased. So if I compute expected value of p bar, this is expected value of 1 over the s n over the sum of y i's. Uh, we find that it's not equal to p. Um, why do we find that it's not equal to p? Well, it's because <laughs> what we're going to show is that this new estimator, that's kind of the, the competing estimator, we're going to show that the expected value of this competing estimator is p. So this is actually unbiased. And if this is unbiased, uh, th then there's no way this can be also unbiased because they're different. Okay. All right. So um, basically, because the method of moments estimator is biased, um, it is not the MVUE. But uh, let's look at this other estimator. This one is is um, unbiased. I'm telling you that. We're going to show that it's unbiased. But um, it's also a function of the sufficient statistic. So uh, it's unbiased, and it's a function of um, a sufficient statistic, um, which means p tilde is the MVUE for p. Okay. We're going to find that the method of moments estimator is actually pretty similar to this one, especially if we make n large, if we have a large sample size and they're not very different. But, um, but yeah, the, the method of moments estimator is not automatically the best. Let's make a, a new page. Okay. So what I want to show now is that um, that this estimator is unbiased, so I want to show this. Okay, so I want to compute expected value of p tilde, which is expected value of n minus 1, sum of the yi's minus 1. So while that looks really intimidating, uh, to make it look less intimidating, let's make, uh, let's remember something that we learned a long time ago. Um, well, let's try to get the distribution of this thing. So um, let's let w be a new random variable, which is the sum of the yi's. Okay. Then I can write this as like expected value of um, n minus 1 over w minus 1, which still doesn't look very easy to compute. But let's see if we can make any progress. Let's identify, if we can, the distribution of, of w. So my w's, my w is the sum of independent geometric random variables. So the moment generating function of w, is the moment generating function of a sum of these geometric random variables. And since those are independent and all have the same distribution, um, the moment generating function of the sum is the product, or, or it's the moment generating function of the geometric p distribution raised to the power n. So if we look up the moment generating function of the geometric p distribution, we get something like this. Okay. Uh -huh. No, this is one minus one minus. Okay. Yeah, had to double check. All right. We get this raised to the power n, 
which when we raise that to the power n becomes, um, well, let's just write it like that. This thing we recognize as the moment generating function of another distribution called the negative binomial distribution, whoa, the negative binomial distribution um, with parameters n and p. Okay, so it's been a long time since we thought about the negative binomial distribution, but um, but basically, um, if w is the number of the trial on which the nth success occurs when we're doing um, independent Bernoulli p trials, so um, uh, from so independent Bernoulli p trials, um, it means W has this negative binomial distribution with uh, parameters n p. Okay, so um, the probability mass function of W is given by is given by uh, this guy. We could look it up in our table. Um, w minus n p raised to the n. Um, and this has support on w, um, n, n plus 1, and so on. Okay, because uh, w is the trial on which the nth success occurs, so it must occur no earlier than the nth trial. All right. Now let's see if we've made uh, any progress. Our estimator back here is um, n minus 1 over w minus 1, where w is the sum of these yi's. So I want to compute this expectation. How can I do it? Um, expected value of n minus 1 over w minus 1. Well, I can write it as a sum over this probability mass function. So I'm going to write a sum over the entire support. W begins at n and goes up to infinity. Then I'm going to plop in my function n minus 1, w minus 1. And then I'm going to put this entire PMF. 1 minus p, w minus n, p to the n. All right, and I'm going to try to simplify this sum in some kind of clever way. What we're going to find is that it's equal to p if we do some steps. What are the steps? I'll, I'll go through it kind of quickly. It begins with exploding this combination. So we've got n minus 1 over w minus 1. So this is w minus 1 factorial, n minus 1 factorial, n minus 1 minus w minus 1 factorial, 1 minus p. Up here, I'm going to go ahead and write w minus 1 minus n minus 1. That doesn't change anything. The 1's cancel. And I'm going to write p raised to the n minus 1, and I'm going to pull a p outside. Okay, so my, this p and these p's um, are the same as p raised to the n. Okay. And now let me uh, note that this w minus 1 will cancel with the first uh, term of this factorial, and this will cancel with the first term of this factorial. So I'm going to get p times w equals n. Now I have w minus 2 factorial, n minus 2 factorial. Um, here I can put n minus, I'll go ahead and put, I'll just put n, n minus 1 minus w minus 1 factorial, 1 minus p, um, w minus 1 minus n minus 1, p to the n minus 1. Okay, now what I'm going to do is a kind of 
I'm going to argue that this should equal 1 because it's the sum over the probability mass function of some beta distribution. But I want to do a little change of index to make it clearer. So set m equal to n minus 1 and set r equal to w minus 1. Let's see what this does for us. So this means wherever I see an n, I can write m plus 1, and wherever I see a w, I can write r plus 1. So I can rewrite this whole thing as p. Some will worry about this in a minute. Um, w minus 2 can be written as uh, r minus 1. So I have r minus 1 factorial. Um, this n minus 2 can be written as m minus 1. Then I can put here m minus r. And it doesn't change anything if I write m minus 1 minus r minus 1 factorial. Then I've got 1 minus p raised to the, this becomes r, and this is my m. So r minus m, and then I have p raised to the m. Now here I had w equals n, so we're going to sum from w beginning at n. Um, this is like, um, so r plus 1 equals um, m plus 1, so w equals n. Um, can be replaced with this, and um, that just means r equals m. Okay, because these ones go away. So I can put here r begins at m and goes up to infinity, and so this is um, sum over the negative binomial distribution uh, with... Um, success probability p, and based on m. So um, when we're looking at the trial in which the, the mth uh, success occurs. So this is all just equal to p. Okay, so that was kind of a, a digression, admittedly. Um, but we have, what have we figured out? So expected value of this p tilde is p, and p tilde... Uh, is based on a sufficient statistic, is based on uh, the sum of the yi's, which is sufficient for p. Therefore, it is, um, is therefore the mvue for p. So the method of moments didn't directly give us the mvue for p. Um, Okay, so we, we've kind of compared it to this in the sense that we found that this second one is the MVUE. Let's figure out how much of a difference it actually makes by uh, doing a little simulation study. So we want to generate some, uh, some data from the geometric distribution. Uh, and we want to do it like many, many times, draw many, many random samples and see which estimator gets the smaller mean squared error. So let's fix a value of p, and let's fix a sample size n, and let's decide how many um, simulations we want to run. So what we're going to do is for little s and 1 to big S, we're going to draw a random sample from the geometric distribution. Um, of size n, and the second argument is p. Now, r parameterizes the geometric distribution a little bit differently. Um, for r, the random variable, the geometric random variable can take uh, zero values. For us, though, it can take zero values, because for us, y is the number of the trial on which first success occurs. So this is um, number of trial on which first success occurs. But 
in R, the geometric random variable, the way it's parameterized, which we can read about in the documentation, um, looks at um, the, the number of failures which precede the first success. So I need to add one in order to get the geometric random variables that I am used to, that we're used to looking at in the class. So there's my sample. So the method of moments estimator was um, going to be 1 over the mean of y. And the, um, the other one, p tilde, was like um, n minus 1 divided by some y minus 1. Okay, now what I want to do is make some empty vectors in which to store these values. So p tilde is going to be an empty vector as well. And then um, I want to keep all these so I can look at them. Okay. Um, p mump not found. Good. So now I've got in this vector a bunch of estimators of p, which are the method of moments estimator. And I've got in this other vector p tilde, the estimators, which um, this is like the MVUE. Okay. So what I want to do is figure out um, which has the smaller MSC. So check which has smaller MSC. So what I want to do is um, look at the average over my 1,000 simulation runs. The true P is 0.5. Up here, I decided what that was going to be. And so I'm just going to compute the average squared distance between my estimator and the truth. I get this number. I'm going to do the same thing for this um, MVUE estimator. And I get, wow, something that is like extremely close to the same number. Um, so let's see, what if I make the sample size smaller, like three, maybe now I'll see a difference. Okay, so I see just barely a difference. It might be informative to uh, decompose the mean squared error. Um, so remember, mean squared error is the square of the bias plus the variance. So if I check the bias by doing the mean of P M O M, um, I see that it's estimating, uh, it's overestimating p because remember p is equal to 0.5, but the average of my p tilde estimates are like closer to 0.5. So um, if I make the number of simulated data sets larger, these will be even more accurate. So um, P tilde is getting like very, very close to 0.5, and the method of moments tends to be overestimating. Um, so we can check the variance of each of them as well. So variance of the method of moments estimator is that, and the variance of the MVUE is this one. So interestingly, the variance of the MVUE is a little bit higher than the variance of the method of moments estimator, um, but that's okay because the minimum variance unbiased estimator only has the smallest variance among unbiased estimators. This method of moments estimator is biased, so it's allowed to have smaller variance. Um, in the end, we're probably most interested in this MSE. Um, under this value of p, p equal to 1 half, actually the method of moments estimator seems slightly better. If I change p, let's say it's 0.1, then what do I get? Um, now it looks like p tilde has a smaller mean squared error than the method of moments. Um, also a little bit smaller variance, and again, it's, uh, it's unbiased. So p tilde um, is unbiased while the method of moments tends to be overestimating. Let's do another example. We now have data from the beta distribution. I keep forgetting to put in my slides that these are independent. Uh, we want to find method of moments estimators now for the parameters alpha and beta. So remember our beta distribution has support on 0 to 1. It can take all kinds of shapes. It can look very different. And so we'll have some like data 
uh, let's say from a histogram like this. And what we want is to find um, which beta distribution has the same first two moments as the random sample. The first two moments because we've got two parameters we want to estimate. So uh, to find the method of moments estimators, we're going to set the first moment of the sample equal to the first population moment, which is a function of alpha and beta. And we're going to set the sem second sample moment equal to the second population moment, which is a function of alpha and beta. And uh, if we look on our cheat sheet, the first population moment is given by alpha over alpha plus beta. The second population moment, um, okay, so remember this is like expected value of x squared, where x has the beta alpha beta distribution. Um, that is like variance of x plus the first moment, okay. The second moment is the variance plus the square of the first moment because we can get the variance by taking the second moment minus the first moment squared. I don't think I need to show that calculation again. So the variance is alpha beta. This we would get from our cheat sheet. But now we need to add the square of the first moment. Okay, let's erase this clutter. We have to solve this system of equations in order to get the method of moments estimators. You are all capable of doing it if you spend enough time. So let me just give you the solutions. Okay, so you play around with algebra long enough. You um, can write uh, alpha as uh, this. M1, so the first sample moment, M, oops, uh, 1 minus M1 prime divided by M2 prime minus the square of M1 prime minus 1. And beta is 1 minus M1 prime times this very same thing. Copy, paste is your friend. Okay, these are the method of moments estimators, and we get these from taking these equations and solving them for alpha and beta. Good, so those are the moms. Could better estimators be out there? Uh, let's think about that question. Um, a really good estimator, really good estimators of alpha and beta should use all the information in the data about those parameters. Maybe you remember that we previously found a set of statistics which were sufficient for the parameters alpha and beta. We can do that again really quickly. Um, if we write down the joint density of the random variables in the sample, it looks like this. These have support on 0 to 1. And um, by the factorization theorem, I can claim that my writing has to catch up to my talking. Um, alpha minus 1 and product 1 minus xi beta minus 1 times a uh, product of these indicator functions. So product I1 to N of these indicators. I can claim by the factorization theorem that these two things are sufficient statistics because um, if this is my function G of these guys, and this is my function H of just the data values, Okay, so I put that one here, that one here. It's a function of, of those statistics and the parameter values alpha and beta uh, times some function of just the data, some function involving just the data. Um, so I have 
product of the xi's and product of 1 minus the xi's. Um, that pair of values is um, a sufficient statistic for the pair of parameters alpha and beta. So I can ask myself, does the method of moments estimator do the method of moments estimators, these guys, use the sufficient statistics? Uh, no, no they don't. Uh, this, the method of moments estimators are based on the first two sample moments where m1 prime is 1 over the sum, uh, 1 over n times the sum of the xi's, and the second sample moment is 1 over n times the sum of the xi's squared. Uh, so it looks like the method of moments estimators are probably not going to be the best because they don't use the sufficient statistics. So if we're interested in the parameters alpha and beta, these first two moments are kind of like the wrong summaries of the data. Okay, so there should be better estimators out there, but we'll get to those uh, later. Now we're going to just uh, show what it looks like to compute the method of moments estimators on a data set. We are going to read in some data, which comes from some other textbook. Um, and what's in the data is a bunch of like Z scores. Uh, they're, they're doing a bunch of tests um, for different genes and trying to ask which one is, which ones are significant explainers of something. Um, so we've got a bunch of these, um, these values. These are all like uh, test statistics, uh, Z scores. And so we're going to convert them to P values like this. Um, so we basically have a bunch of P values in X. Okay, so P values are between 0 and 1. Um, we haven't talked about P values this semester yet, but um, you've heard about them when we're testing hypotheses. If we get small, a small P value will reject. And so basically, like um, this. Uh, data set, they want to test 6,000 or so different hypotheses, and for each one they get a p-value, and here's just a histogram of all the p-values. Okay, um, all we're going to do today is just try to fit a beta distribution to these data using the method of moments estimators for those beta parameters. Why is a beta distribution the natural choice? We've got values between 0 and 1. That's where the beta distribution lives. So let's uh, go ahead and compute the maximum, or sorry, the method of moments estimators. So um, we're going to have alpha bar and beta bar. First, let me get m1 is the mean of x, and m2 is the um, mean of x squared. And then alpha bar is m1 times um, m1. 1 times 1 minus m1 divided by m2 minus the square of m1, all of that stuff minus 1. And copy-paste is again our friend. This was the method of moments estimator for uh, beta. So let's run those. All right, uh, what do we get? Alpha bar is this value. Beta bar is that value. So um, that doesn't tell me anything. I would like to make a plot of this thing. So let's, um, let's make a sequence of x values um, over which we want to plot things. So let's start at like 0 0.001 and go up to 0 0.999. And we'll do length 999 so that we get a sequence which is like this, um, increasing by 0 0.001 each time. And let's compute the density of, of the beta distribution um, at each value of x um, under these parameters. So I can use the dBeta function to compute the height of the beta density. And I'm, I want to compute it at those x values. And the sh first shape parameter is my alpha bar. And the second shape parameter is my beta bar. 
So let me do that. And then um, what I want to do is add to my histogram some lines, which are this density, the beta density uh, versus the X sequence. Okay, so I get this. Um, here's my histogram, and here is the PDF of a beta distribution. And this beta distribution uh, was chosen such that um, it has the same mean as the data. And in addition, it has the same uh, second moment as the data. Let's do one last method of moments example. We've got a random sample from the Weibel distribution with parameters A and B. The PDF of this distribution is like this, so it has support on the positive numbers, and um, we want to find the method of moments estimators of A and B. So this distribution tends to, it looks kind of right skewed like this. So if we had some data, which we'll look at in a second, um, here we're going to look at this data, and um, it looks kind of like right skewed like this, and so we might want to fit a Weibull distribution to that data. Let's figure out how we would get the method of moments estimators for A and B. Okay, so to get the moms, we need to equate the first two moments of the sample in the population. Okay, now um, we don't have written anywhere on our cheat sheet um, what the expected value of x is and what um, the expected value of x squared is from this distribution. <coughs> I think we looked at it on a homework at some point, so I'm not going to uh, record deriving it all over again, uh, but uh, at some point we figured out that the first moment was given by b times the gamma function of 1 plus 1 over a, and the second moment was given by b squared gamma function of 1 plus 2a. And um, this is derived in the lecture notes, uh, in the handwritten lecture notes. So if you want to check that out, please do. So, um, so remember this is like x bar, and this is like, we could call it x squared bar, so the mean of the squared observations. So we want to take these two equations and solve them for a and b. Okay, so um, I can probably write um, B, so using the first equation, I can get B equals M1 divided by gamma function of 1 plus 1 over A, and then hmm, um, for the second equation, I can substitute this B in. So um, the second equation gives me then, um, if I put this stuff in for b, I get m1 prime over gamma function of 1 plus 1 over a, all of that squared, times gamma function of 1 plus 2a. Okay. Um, and now it seems like what I would want to do is, um, is get A by itself, um, except that I can't. I can't get it by itself because it's kind of locked up in these gamma functions. So it's kind of stuck inside these gamma functions. Um, so how can I find it? Well, let's rewrite this a little bit uh, more clearly. So I've got like m2 prime over here. Let's divide both sides by the square of m1. Then I can write 
this thing as like gamma function 1 plus 2a, and then in the denominator I have 1 plus 1 over a. Um, this thing is squared. Okay, um, so I still can't get a by itself. It's stuck inside here. Um, so what I'm going to have to do um, is basically find a uh, with a computer that is find the value of a which solves this equation and then um, then I can plug it in for b so then plug in um, into the other equation so basically I'll take this guy whoa um, So once I find a bar, I'll just plug it in down here to get b bar. So what I want to do is um, is find the value of a bar such that um, this is this is true. So two over a bar, one over a bar. So find a bar which satisfies this and then plug into this and then I'll have my method of moments estimators so how in the world can I use a computer to find the value of a which satisfies this um, a really kind of crude way to do it would be um, to to look at all a bar like just try different values like um, be 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.03, and so on. And I just evaluate this thing many, many times for all these different, I evaluate it at all these different uh, A bar values and ask when do I get the closest to this? Um, or what, what we're, a better way to do it is the following way. Um, let's rearrange this. If I, um, so if I have this equality, it means that if I subtract this one, that should be equal to zero. Okay. Uh, so this equality um, is true if and only if um, this is true. So what I can do is um, in R, I can define this function of A. So, um, so I can make this as a function of a and find uh, for what a it is equal to zero and r has some kind of built-in uh, function to search for um, the root of a function so if i give r a function and ask it to find the root that is the the value of the argument at which the function is zero um, r has an efficient way of doing that so we have to, to search numerically for a. So search numerically. That means we, we can't find a closed form solution for a bar. Um, we have to look for it with a computer. And once we get it, we'll plug it into this. Uh, so let's go to the computer and see how that looks. Here's some data. Let's take a look at it. It makes this histogram. So we want to fit a, a viable distribution to this data using the method of moments. Um, in order to find the method of moments estimators, uh, remember we had to numerically find the law, numerically find a by looking at this function and finding the value of a at which this function is equal to zero. And then we can plug it in here and get b. So what I need to do is just define some function, let's call it a function, here's how you define a function in R, which is equal to that function um, where we find the method of moments estimator by finding a uh, for which the function is zero. So it was m2 divided by m1 squared minus the gamma function of one plus two over a, divided by uh, 
gamma function of 1 plus 1 over a squared. Okay, and so we're going to put into the function an a and an m1 and an m2. Okay, and um, we should, when you define a function, you need to say what value does it return. So um, we'll say the function computes this value and it returns that value. Okay, so um, there's my function. Now what I want to do is is use another R function which will will take this function for a given m1 and m2 and find the value of a at which it's equal to zero, and that is the um, uni root function. You can read about it over here. The way we use it is we specify what function we're talking about. This is the function of which we want to find root. We specify some interval over which it should look for the root. So let's pick something like 0.1 up to 10 because the I'm guessing the the viable uh, the method of moments estimator is going to probably lie between some kind of interval like that. And um, so it's going to try to to look at um, whatever the first argument is. It's going to uh, look for the value of that argument which sets the function equal to zero. So I need to put in values for these other arguments. So I can put m1 equals m1, m2 equals m2, where I need to compute m1 as the mean of x and m2 as the mean of x squared. Okay, so let's do that. And I did something wrong. Okay, I need to build a vector there for the interval. Okay, so we get um, all this output from the unit root function. This uh, piece of the output called root is uh, the value of a at which this function is zero. So I can I can test that out by putting um, 1.836 in here, 1.836 in here, and it, it's basically zero. Okay. If I want to pull that just that number out of the output, I'm going to put a dollar sign root. And so now when I execute this, it pulls out exactly that number. And so I'm going to just put that in as my alpha bar. Okay, then my beta bar is going to be um, the function of alpha bar given by this that we derived. So that is m1 divided by the gamma function of 1 plus 1 over alpha bar. There's my beta bar. Okay, so what are the values of these? My alpha bar was this 1.86 thing, and beta bar is this one. So um, let's go ahead and make our histogram again and try to overlay the uh, viable density under these method of moments estimators. So I'm going to make a sequence of x values from 0 up to, let's say, 100 length equals say a thousand and then um, viable density at those values of x is going to be there's actually a, a d viable uh, function um, so i'm going to put in x sequence and then um, let's read the help on this dviable to make sure we put the parameters in correctly. So there's a shape and a scale. We can read about it here. That looks how, it, how we formulated it. So um, shape is the A. So we'll put, why am I calling these alpha? Let me call it A bar and B bar. A bar and B bar. Okay. Why am I calling them alpha and beta? Because we just have A and B. Okay, running that again. Um, shape is my A bar and scale is my B bar. Okay, so um, now let's put lines which are this uh, Bible, this one against X sequence. So make the histogram and put the um, the lines, I want lines over it. There we go, beautiful. So uh, this is the PDF of the viable distribution under parameter values such that it has the same mean as the data and the same second moment as the data. So basically the same mean and the variance as the data.
Okay, and so we had to do this kind of numerical procedure where we define this function, we search for the root of the function using this uni root thing, and uh, get the method of moments estimators. Mm -hmm.